Hi, I'm Wanda with Jimmy Branch Homestead, and today I'm going to be canning chicken. So, <clears throat> first of all, I'm going to do breast, and I've cut them in about one inch strips, and I'm just going to go back and cut them in little chunks, one half to one inch um, pieces. Apologize for the lawnmower noise. My husband's trying to get the cut, grass cut before it rains again. We've been having lots of storms. So I'm just going to keep on cutting up chicken strips and I'll be back with you. So next I'm going to fill the jars to one inch head space and I always just measure to the bottom of uh, the, where the ring goes as a guide. You can use a measurement um, for canning and that's fine but I always find this works good too. Now I'm going to put the meat in there but not super tightly. Um, because the heat needs to get be able to get in between there and it will make its own juice as it um, cooks down. And I'm doing it this way for um, sandwiches, and I like to make a rice dish that takes um, cut up chicken. And this way I don't have to thaw the chicken um, before I start cooking it. And it's handy for, um, like I said, chicken sandwiches. We like chicken salad and chicken sandwiches a lot. Um, so that's why I want to can up so much to have it on hand. Okay. I gotta go get some more jars. Okay, well that made just under six. Um, I have several more chickens to process as we just butchered them yesterday. Um, so let me bring those in and part them out and I'll be back. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and wipe the rings, which I already did on this, I mean the rims. Just to make sure if I got any chicken juice um, or chunks on them. This one I'm going to hold off because it's not full. And today I am using the Superb uh, Canning Lids from Azure Standard. I've had very, very good luck with them. I switched to them when I was um, having a lot of canning failures with the ball canning lids. And you can tell they're heavier. They're a thicker lid. And you really hear them when they pop. <laughs> when they seal. Okay, put that to the side. And my canner will hold a lot of jars, like 
20 or 22, something like that, I can't remember, uh, pints, because it holds three layers. The top layer doesn't hold the few, I mean this, the whole eight, like the first two layers does. So it might be 20 that it holds four on the very top one. And we're cold packing everything today, so the water in the canner is also going to be cold. Okay, I'm going to go get some more chickens, and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, I'm not sure if that recorded. So, um, I am also doing some thighs. And these are bone-in, but they're skinless. And I was able to fit four of them in the jar. So, in a quart jar. And my thought behind that is it's a quick, easy meal. The meat will already be cooked. I can throw it in the oven with some mushroom soup. Um, it'll have some juice on it. Or I can just warm it up with some seasoning. Um, so I'm happy to try. I have not done this before, so I am happy to try that. Um, let me go get some more chickens. Okay, I think I've prepared the max I can put in my canner. I can't put the third row of pints whenever I use quarts. And I wipe down the tops here with vinegar. Most of them, let me get, finish this up. Just to get any juice or meat particles off. Okay. <coughs> and I just used a paper towel with vinegar to do that. Okay, and so I ended up with um, two pints of thighs, and there's four thighs in each pint. One of drum uh, drumsticks, there's four drumsticks in it, and one of thighs, I mean wings, then I got one quart of um, chicken meat for salads and cooking and sandwiches. And a total of, let's see, one, two, three, let's see, two, four, five, seven, nine, ten pints of the chicken salad, chicken sandwich, um, and for cooking my meals that I like. Um, so let's go ahead and get these. I need to open another box of lids. I'm really excited to be putting these on the shelf. We're kind of running out of some freezer space. We just picked up a hog that we had processed too. Um, and I'm having trouble with one of my indoor freezers that I need to defrost and make sure maybe the door got cracked open or something and because uh, it keeps dripping on the top shelf. I checked everything, everything is still frozen. Um, so I don't know if it's a seal gone bad. If somebody left it a jar, um, so that's another thing I'll have to do is uh, get, what did it do with all those rings? Um, get that freezer defrosted and figured out. But not today.
we like the the non frost free we don't like frost free freezers it freezer burns the meat too quickly I'd much rather defrost freezers than have the frost free okay I need four five six more rings um, okay I'll be back in a moment Okay, you may have noticed I did not put any seasoning on my chicken. Um, because I'm going to be using it for different purposes, I didn't want to put any seasoning on it. Um, I have in past times put a little bit of salt and pepper um, just on the meat and kind of tossed it and then put it in jars. I will tell you, however, that a little pepper goes a long way in canning. Um, so if I'm canning with salt and pepper, I put half of what I would normally put on it while I'm cooking it, you know, at just regular from raw state. So this will make meal planning so much easier. Um, if you've been watching my channel, you know that I've been concentrating on a lot of um, meals on the shelf. Um, because we're on a homestead, we get very, very busy. And it just makes life easier when we can cook quality meals, quick meals, um, in, in, you know, just a few minutes, just to warm up. And again, um, you just want to spin and then tighten to finger tight. Oh, there's one I missed. Okay, I'm gonna spin this around and we're gonna put these in the canner. Okay, so the canner is over here. Now everything's cold. I cold packed, so the water is cold also. We're gonna start from a cold state. And the quartz will go in on the bottom. Processing time for these will be 90 minutes. Um, the processing time for quartz, uh, pints is 75. For quartz is 90 minutes when you're cooking meats. Um, and since quartz is the longest, I'll cook the whole, the whole canner has to be on for 90 minutes. Okay, so I put five quarts and two pints on the bottom layer. Let me show you how I did this. Um, and I arranged them the way I did because this little plate sits on top. Okay, now I gotta put in the next layer. I think I'll add just a little bit more cold water.
Okay. So that is the second layer. I just absolutely love this canner um, because I am able to do so many jars at a time. In the past, I have another canner and I'll keep it because sometimes I have them both going. Um, in the past, I could only do seven pints or seven quarts. Here, I could do seven quarts and eight pints um, or like I have five quarts and two pints in the bottom right now um, and eight on the top so you know really cuts down on having to do a second canner load for the same amount of meat okay I am going to put the lid on okay. so on the all-american I have to make sure it's straight this way, I have to line up these arrows and these, but I also have to make sure it's level this way. So I want about the same amount of room all the way around. And I usually have to look at it a few times to get that right. Okay. That looks pretty good. Um, now the All-American is a metal-to-metal -metal seal, so occasionally I'll need to redo the inside with Vaseline. Um, so when you are fastening these, you do them opposites, sides first. And I just do them uh, just to snug, not too tight here, until I get them all the way around. And then I go back and tighten them down. Again, tightening opposite sides. Okay. Now I'm going to turn the oven on high to get the pressure um, on and built up. Let's see, I think I just got to scoot the canner over a little. Now the one thing about this canner, because it is so tall, you need to make sure that your stove can handle it. Um, it is it. You cannot use this canner on ceramic tops. Um, it's too heavy. And the other thing is, you need to make sure you're tall enough. Now, I even though I'm so short, I had my um, upper cabinets raised a couple inches. Um, actually, I think three or four inches. Um, because I wanted plenty of room in between my appliances when I'm using them. And luckily because I did, I have enough room for my canner here as well. So that's something to think about if you're thinking about purchasing the All-American Canner. I just love it, but you need to make sure that your kitchen can accommodate it. Okay, so at this point, um, we're going to leave the canner on until it starts steaming, full steam, out this vent here. And then I'll bring you back and show you what that's like and next steps. Okay, there is steam coming out the vent now. So at this point, I need to turn on the timer for 10 minutes. So we have to vent um, the canner for a full 10 minutes. And then I'll come back and show you the next step. Okay, so the timer just went off. Um, so it's vented for a full 10 minutes. So next I'm going to put the pressure gauge or the weight on. And mine has three temperature or three different settings, 5, 10, or 15. Um, I'm not sure if you can see those numbers on there. They're kind of small. Um, and I'm going to process at the 10 pound weight. And that's based on my altitude uh, below 1,000 feet. Okay, so now I have to wait till the canner builds up pressure. It builds up to 10 to 11 pounds of pressure um, based on my little weight here. And it will show on the gauge over here. Oops. Yeah, I think you can see that over here. Um, and it, the weight will start kind of jiggling. And when it does that, I'll bring you back and show you what that looks like. And then we'll set the timer. Okay, so the canner is uh, jiggling continuously 
and it is up to 11 pounds pressure, which is normal. And again, the pint's processed for 75 minutes and the quart's for 90, so I'll need to run it for 90 minutes. <clears throat> okay, so this canner has finished and I've turned off the burner. I'm just going to leave it here to cool overnight. Um, the All-American is pretty thick, so it takes a long time to completely cool down. And that way I don't risk any seepage in the jars. <clears throat> so I'll come back in the morning and show you the end result. Um, in case I forgot to show you what it looks like with the way this other canner is going. And this is what it's like uh, for the jiggler to go steady. <clears throat> So I'll be back with you in the morning, just a moment for you. Well, it is the next morning and our chicken is all processed and cooled and cleaned up, ready for the pantry shelf. So this section here, all of these jars, this all is what will fit in my large All-American canner, my 30-quart All-American. And then this over here, I put in my second canner. I have a Presto canner. And <coughs> look at that beautiful white chicken breast. I'm so excited. And by the way, this is not water I put in there. This is chicken juice that come out during the cooking process, during the, the processing. So all this chicken is fully cooked and ready to use. Will be great for sandwiches, chicken salads, and some of my chicken meals that I make uh, with rice, a chicken rice dish I do. If you've not seen that video, go back and watch it in the playlist, in the cooking playlist. So if you're enjoying this type of video, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and share our, our videos. It's the best way that you can help us to grow our channel. Thank you so much for watching. Jimmy Branch Homestead.